Welcome to the in call, uh, call report for second quarter. Um, still people people coming into the meeting, I can see. So, but it's one minute past ten. So I guess we can just start anyway. Um, thank you for attending. My name is um, Anders Hamnes, and I'm the CEO and founder of the company. Um, there is a tab button somewhere called Q&A, so please submit questions um, there uh, and not use the chat because it's easier for us to work with the Q&A feature. Uh, and we will get back to your questions in the end of this meeting. First, some highlights for the quarter. Uh, our ARR ended at 75 or to back red 74.7 million, uh, up from up 66% uh, over the last 12 months. And the net new ARR was up 28%. And it's important to understand that this is actually growth of growth <laughs> because um, the growth was 66, but our last year growth is up 28%. Um, we have an ARR to sales ratio of 135% uh, because we're growing uh, so much. It is much higher than our net sales. Um, and net retention ended at 121%, which is very strong. Uh, and 94% on gross retention. And uh, LTV cock around 13 for the quarter, which means that we, for every kroner we invest, we get 13 kroner back. I just want to say like one minute about the concept to those of you that are new to OneFlow. So we are an e-contract platform where you can create contract templates. You can collaborate in real time, make changes, communicate, discuss, do it all on one slate. And of course you can sign your contracts. And when you're done, you can also manage your contracts inside OneFlow. Uh, for example, be notified on key events and work with the data uh, in the contracts. And then we also offer a lot of uh, uh, analytic tools along this, this journey. And we have a lot of powerful integrations, of course. Uh, three main sales channels, uh, direct sales, very high touch um, effort, outbound, inbound. We do have several sales teams. Uh, working uh, on prospecting, booking meetings, and so on, uh, focusing more on the medium-sized enterprise uh, companies. Um, partner sales, we do have different partner programs, um, working uh, very, very well, actually. And then self-serve, um, two parts. One part is marketing-driven, marketing, driven. marketing um, generate leads to the homepage, they sign up, uh, in a freemium, and then some of those people convert or product driven, which means that the counterpart inside a contract uh, uh, will be able to convert into uh, a freemium. And then we're going to work on them to try to convert them into a paid plan. Um, if you look at the ARR, which is, of course, our main KPI, because sales is actually a lagging indicator. Um, 75 million for the quarter, up from 45 million last year, uh, a growth of 66%. And if you look at the graph to the right, it looks like we are in some kind of a negative trend. And that's not the, how we see it ourselves, because the reason uh, second quarter and third quarter last year was so high is also related to that the corona kicked in one year earlier. So sales was a little bit slower then. So that was why the growth maybe was uh, slightly higher uh, uh, in, 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 in Q2 and Q3 21. So um, 
Uh, we don't expect this to be a downward trend. Uh, we uh, will get back to our target in the end of this deck, but we're going to remain our ARR tar target, which implies that we have to stay north of 60% year-over-year growth to reach our uh, ambitious uh, target. So, so we 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 we, we definitely uh, don't see this as a negative, negative as a downward trend. Uh, we want to 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 stay at these levels at least. Uh, net new ARR. If you take the new ARR and then you add uh, expansion ARR, you get gross new ARR. And if you subtract a churn and downgrade, you have the net. So that's how much the ARR is growing. Uh, All-time high uh, second quarter, 9 million, um, up from 7, one year earlier, which is the growth of 28%. And as I say, said, on, uh, said on the summary slide, this is actually a growth of a growth, so to say. So because the growth is 6%. To the right, you have... Um, you have um, uh, based on seasons, so you can see uh, the different uh, that Q3, for example, is a quite uh, is a much weaker quarter, uh, obviously due to vacation holiday season. Uh, uh, July and and also most of August is quite slow uh, for most companies. Uh, then there is a slight Q2 and Q4 is slightly better uh, than Q1 normally. Um, but Q1 is also a, a very strong quarter. Um, retention rates. So the gross retention was 94%, up from 93% one year earlier. And it does, of course, include downgrades, uh, not only churn, but also downgrades. Uh, and we are, I mean, there will always be some, some churn and we are, are quite uh, high. Maybe it could be a percent or two better, but, but uh, more than that, it's not realistic. There will always be some, 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 some churn. Things are happening. Uh, companies are going bankrupt and getting, getting, getting bought up by different things. So, so there's always some, some gross churn uh, out there. Um, net retention rate, uh, 121 up from 115 one year ago. Um, so we have a very strong sales within existing customers, uh, which is which is uh, very important for us. Uh, and we expect this to remain very high, uh, that the customers are starting to use. Typically we enter, for example, uh, uh, to sales or, or HR, and then we grow and expand into other departments um, along the road. Um, we had 68% more paying users uh, this quarter than we had one year ago. Uh, 25, slightly more than 25,000 uh, people are paying for, or seats are paying for OneFlow. And this does, of course, not include uh, freemium or um, what they call guest users, which means counterparties in contracts. These are like real seats with a password. Uh, 25,000. Um, and to the right, you have the average ARR uh, per seat, and it looks like it's going down. Actually, it's not. The reason uh, it has declined has also to do with the net uh, retention, because we have, during the last quarter, signed several um, bigger deals with existing big uh, accounts. So, for example, I a big company with a lot of seats, they will get a volume discount. And and uh, and during the last quarter, we had actually several of those deals, big companies, big customers already have, having a lot of seats with us and they bought, bought more seats and they had a lower uh, agreed price. Uh, as you can see on the net retention, we had we, we had quite a strong number there for the quarter. So that's the reason that the average price is, is dropping a little bit. So if you look at cohorts uh, on the price for different... Uh, uh, company segments, it's actually uh, going up a little bit in most in most categories. Net sales at 16.5, up 59% last quarter. And uh, outside Sweden, we had 24% last quarter, which is also in a very nice trend. And there is a huge market in Sweden. 
for us. And we have a lot more to do in uh, Sweden. But of course, we want more. So European expansion is very important for us over the coming, uh, coming years. Uh, to talk a little bit, little bit more about uh, expansion. Uh, so today we have customers in 27 countries. Um, let's say it's up to Sweden, 24%. And we have had for several years now teams in Norway and Finland working very well. Uh, so they are like more in a mature state now. We have, they have sound, sound KPIs, uh, uh, which is great. Uh, we opened an office in UK in May uh, last quarter. Uh, they had a headcount of seven by the end of Q2. Today, it's actually eight there. Um, and we also hired a lot of people uh, in uh, Netherlands and France. Uh, we are also in process with 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 uh, a lot of people there. So uh, the, the 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 subsidiaries are established um, in in those countries as well. And uh, we are planning to open the offices in the beginning of September this year. So we don't expect any huge ARR contribution this year for any of these actually markets. It's going to take time, uh, but next year we should definitely see some nice contribution to our growth. So why do we expand? I mean, of course, contracts is, has a huge potential in every, com in every country because every com company, even every department in every company, in every country have contracts. So the market is huge and Sweden and the Nordics are definitely uh, leading the evolution here uh, together with UK and the US. So Europe is maybe most countries five years behind uh, the Nordics here. But we believe that now is a very good timing. Uh, we have done a, an extensive uh, research on these markets. And now is a very good timing for us to enter uh, France, Netherlands and the UK. Um, so we have, we are very enthusiastic about um, about this expansion. Um, gross margin, 95, to back rate 94.5% for the last quarter. Um, the graph is starting at 80 here. So if it started at zero, it would look like a flat line. It is actually, um, we be, we expect it to remain at these, at these uh, uh, levels. The reason or the biggest chunk, around two thirds of our cost of service is related to commission to partners. And one third is the typical tra traditional cost of sales stuff. And the biggest, um, 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 vendor is AWS uh, for hosting. But uh, as I said, uh, two thirds of the cost of sales is to partners. And that's why it might be a little bit hard to, for us to accurately like uh, predict if it's going to be one or two percent uh, up or down. Uh, if you have some big, big partner deals coming in, then it will uh, impact a little bit on the on the, the gross margin, but we expect it to remain uh, on these levels going forward. Um, slightly higher costs. This is completely in line with the company plan to invest in, in product, which means people, uh, and a new market uh, entries. So um, increased cost mainly consists of, of uh, higher employee costs. Uh, we had uh, 124 employees at the end of the second quarter. This is up from 84 a year ago. Um, and also in Sri Lanka, we have, a, we have got a team of 11 developers by the end of uh, the quarter, which was up from three one year ago. So we are we are adding a lot of lot of people to to the product here uh, to develop an, a very, an, an even stronger platform. And also, uh, we did establish three offices outside the Nordics in the second quarter which also had a lot of costs related. So that is why uh, the cost is going up a little bit. So uh, according to plan, um, so we are in the early stage and we have a very heavy focus on building the product and to take a position as a thought leader in, in first, first in Europe. Um, 
and and we're gonna gonna keep our EBIT target for 26 as we bring it back to in the last slide. So this is just a short term thing. Um, LTV cock is another very important SaaS KPI. Um, and of course it goes down because the cock is going up for the reasons I explained in the previous graph. Uh, the LTV is very high because we have a very low churn. Uh, and actually when we calculate the LTV here, uh, you can do that in different ways. And we have decided to do it in a very simple way because most companies do. So we just take the, the, the ARR per customer and divide it on the churn. What is wrong with that is that it does not include expansion sales on those customers. We know that there is a lot of expansion. I mean, we have a net retention of 121% uh, for the last quarter. And it's been stable and and and, and growing for, for a very long time. So. So um, um, there is another formula you could use, but it's very quite advanced. So I decided to keep it to the simple one because that one everybody understands. So, so um, but the, anyway, uh, we had uh, 13 for Q2, which means that we get 13 kroner back for every kroner we invest, which is very good. And again, uh, we are investing heavily now in, uh, in new markets and, and uh, adding more developers. So that is the reason uh, the cock is going up a little bit. So we are uh, launching stuff every week, um, and and we had but we had one major release this this quarter, and uh, that was our new editor. Uh, we have been working on it for a year. It's a huge huge project, and it has been a blocker for us for adding new and powerful so called cool features on top of the editor. So so now it's out there. Uh, it's it's a relief. So now we can start to focus more on building the fancy um, features on top of the editor. Um, we are, as I said many times before, in a product race, we have to build a very, very strong uh, platform um, and that costs people. Um, so uh, we are hiring a lot of people uh, these days, uh, but of course we will deploy our funds wisely. We we. Uh, and and also uh, we pay very close attention to our culture, which is uh, a cornerstone or in our DNA to to always be very culture focused in in one flow. The ENPS for the quarter last quarter was eighty three, which is super high. The average in Sweden is fourteen. Um, and um, and um, because success will not make anybody happy, but happiness will give success. So we believe to hire talent and to keep a very strong and good culture is the key to success. So the goals, um, we will remain our ARR target of 600 million SEC by the end of 2026. And also an EBIT margin in the same year of at least 20% plus, which means that we have to turn uh, this EBIT margin curve um, uh, uh, relatively soon. And of course, um, um, yeah. Let me go to the questions here. Do you see longer deal cycles? How? Would you handle a potentially slower market due to the mark to, to macro? Uh, we do not see low uh, any longer deal cycles, um, and we do not see yet see any signs uh, when it comes to uh, increased churn and so on due to the economic situation out there. Not yet. It might, of course. Uh, happen. Uh, we have written something about that in our interim report, uh, also, and we have to be like on on alert, of course. Um, 
but um, as as long as we don't see any signs, we just continue as planned. But uh, of course, we have to to turn the vessel if if uh, if we see uh, any indications. I mean, we're meshing a lot with, with our customers. We are working with health scores and so on, and we track every event they do, and and we can see quite early on if something is wrong with a company, then we can see it quite early. Uh, in most cases, um, so. Um, yeah. Is your hiring pace as expected or slower than expected? Well, to be open about that, uh, before the IPO, we had to slow down a little bit because we because of everything that happened in the world, you know, and we 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 didn't know um, uh, exactly when it when it would happen and if we and and if it would be so so successful successful as it actually was. So we had to slowed down a little bit uh, for some time before the IPO and um, and uh, but we had but when we when we finalized the IPO and and raised the money then we could uh, increase uh, our efforts again to hire more people so I would say now now today we are back to to where we want to be on the speed of hiring but there was maybe a six months time that we were not hiring as much as we planned because we needed to to keep our runway uh, and not take any risks. Uh, international expansion, progress and traction with new offices and also existing presence. So we have closed several deals in UK already. Uh, it is far too early to to say we're gonna we know it takes time uh but we have a very strong team um it has actually actually been easier to hire people in uk and france i would say than than um here in sweden and norway and finland it's it's it, here it's quite hard to find talent these days but uh but um uh, in uk and, and and france we are very impressed about about the level of of um, uh, the amount of of applications and also how, how strong they have been. Um, so, but again, too 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 early to say. Average revenue per user slightly lower solely due to expansions or anything to do with new sales pricing as well. Well, we have not, as you can see from our homepage, we have not increased our prices, um, but. We have a project ongoing actually um, to discuss that. So because we believe ourselves that we are quite cheap actually, so we we will we will get back to that during this 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 fall. Uh, but we have not officially increased our prices. Um, um, but the the decline in the average revenue per uh, per uh, user was related to the mix of companies buying more expansion seats during the quarter. Um, would it be relevant for you to expand your product offering with KYC AML solution? Uh, we'll get back to that. We don't disclose uh, what's in our product backlog. Uh, Could you elaborate on key target customer group? And is your platform built primarily for internal or external use? Well, we have, of course, in the early ages, uh, years, focused on industries where um, more tech savvy, where adoption takes is easier, which has been, of course, consulting companies uh, and, and tech companies. But I would say today we have a quite broad customer portfolio. Uh, but yes, we do in our outbound sales and marketing efforts, we do have um, a more uh, crossing the chasm philosophy that we focus more narrow on industries where we know that the penetration is, is, is going to be easier. Um,
How do you prioritize OPEX increases? Could you give examples of investments you have chosen not to do and why? Which implies that we have changed our mind in some way, but we have not actually. So uh, I don't think I can give any examples of something that we plan to do and then plan not to do it. Um, I think I hope I have um, answered all questions and if I have not please um, send me an email and we'll get back to you as soon as we have time uh, today um, Thank you for attending and uh, wish you all a great weekend. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye, cheers.